got a first. We got a crossover. You're, you're not John Dickinson. I am not John Dickinson, which means I'll be out of here very soon. Good news, Greg Silver. The Warriors, 192 winners over the Portland Trailblazers. Started off tonight's show saying, Warriors are taking a gamble. No Clay Thompson, no Draymond Green. I know the Trailblazers are bad, but you have to be absolutely certain that you can win that ball game. And uh, up until about two minutes left, I think it was still very much up in the air. Well, first, let's get to what all the listeners are wondering. I am Greg Silver, the producer of this show. John Dickinson is in Sacramento, like he talked about at the end of last show. So he's going to be joining us in just a moment. But we wanted to get on right away because an ugly win inspires nothing than an immediate show afterwards. <laughs> but when I say ugly win, Kerry Crowley, it's only one of those words that matters. Exactly. And it's not ugly. It's win. It is win. <laughs> uh, how was your show tonight, Sports Fan? Yeah, well, Sports Phone's over. Uh, I want to thank everyone involved in Sports Phone tonight. Jacob did a great job producing and booking tonight's show. Uh, Cole was tremendous behind the scenes. He went above and beyond to make tonight's show. He's really the Ipe Mizahara of uh, of the KMBR staff. So shout out to Cole for working hard behind the scenes and uh, helping, helping me translate those sound bites into on-air bits. Uh, and then, uh, you know, our guests as well. We had a great group, Eric Edholm. We had... Uh, David Dusek, we had uh, Steven Risotto, and that's enough of Sports Phone Can BR. I think you got to carry it the rest of the way, Greg. I think that this Warriors 192 win will inspire plenty of conversation. Two games left to go in the regular season. As far as I know, the eighth seed still in play for this Warriors team right now. So, eighth seed very much still in play. The Kings are about to lose yep. to the Pelicans in Sacramento. If Phoenix beats the Kings and the Warriors win out, they would be able to get that eighth seed. That's huge. That's huge. So tomorrow night's game becomes all the more important. Warriors will have a rested Clay Thompson, a rested Draymond Green, and we'll see if Steph Curry goes because he might benefit from some rest as well. Brandon Ingram not expected to play for the Pelicans who are going to be on the back end of a back-to-back. -back. They don't have to fly from Sacramento down to San Francisco, but really interesting scenario right now. And I'm going to say goodbye to you. I'm going to let you and JD take it the rest of the way. So JD will probably join you in a moment. But uh, thanks to everyone who listened to Sports Zone Can BR tonight. Greg Silver has Dubs OT right now. And uh, we already played the intro. So, Greg, it's, it's your show the rest of the way, buddy. I appreciate it, Kerry. And if they say you don't know ball, I don't know what they're talking about. Kerry oh, Crowley, certified everybody. Certified ball. <laughs> well, listen, everybody. Here's the deal. John Dickinson joining us shortly from Sacramento. I'll go take my rightful place back behind the glass. But... As we said at the top of the show, wanted to welcome in everybody right off the bat. I see our regulars, Buco Sports, Joe Schmo, Regulator, Bill M, CA, Judith Pierre, Rebel to Sounds, Erwin Kwong. I could go on and on, but it is good to see all you. And you should be fired up because like I said, it's an ugly win, but only one of those words matters at this point in the season and with what the Warriors have right in front of them. And it's a win. The points off of turnovers disparity kept Portland in the game for a long time. And ultimately, it was the two vets who were the engine down the stretch. Steph Curry had a rough shooting night heading into quarter number four. He was 5 of 17, sat out when the game was tied late third at 64 apiece. And then the Warriors had a 9-1 to run to make it 87-86. That ultimately ballooned into an 18-3 to run. And Kavon Looney, Mr. Old Reliable, everybody knows who is a regular on this program, what I feel about Kavon Looney. Coming in with 11 rebounds, 9 points, some crucial plays, including a steal off an inbound that led to Curry, to Pajemski for the and one which was kind of the play that really broke this game open finally in the end. But man, kind of a stressful one, kind of a reminder of what the Warriors have been at times this season. I mean, Jacob's right behind the glass and he's nodding at me the whole time. That was a very November, December win for Golden State. You're playing against a team that is not very good. They're young, they're scrappy, they're giving you problems, turnovers are shooting you in the foot. And then you got to have Steph Curry put on the cape and take the torch down the stretch and get a win. But Joe H, 
Like you say in the chat, an ugly win is better than a pretty loss. There is no doubt about it whatsoever. And if you're just filtering in, once again, it's Dubs OT with Greg Silver, but also John Dickinson, who is out in Sacramento for the Kings and the Pelicans game. So he's going to be joining me shortly. Business will go on as normal. We got Jacob and Cole in the studio tonight to cut a lot of sound. And man, you got away with it, resting Draymond and Clay. Like, you made the decision to rest them. I think it was the right decision. And now you can say with the win, it was definitively the move. But you lose this game, that's not looking very good. And the Warriors were struggling defensively. So, yes, it's good that you were able to get Draymond and Clay that rest, but that fell on the big if of if you could get that game going. So, uh, all in all, it's a good night for the Golden State Warriors. They still control their own destiny at the nine seed. The eight seed is still very much in play, barring the result of Phoenix and Sacramento. The Kings losing, and I think it is final now. In Sacramento, the Pelicans took it to him. Pels got off on a scorching hot run. I think it was a 15-0 run to make it 31-11. to The Kings actually responded with a 15-0 run of their own to cut it from a 23-point deficit to an 8, but ultimately, it was the New Orleans Pelicans without Brandon Ingram who will go in and get the win, and now it's looking a lot better for them. Pelicans likely will not have Brandon Ingram tomorrow night. Both teams will be on a back-to-back -back when the Warriors face them at Chase Center, so a lot of traveling coming up for both teams. Brandon Ingram, I think, is set to return on Sunday, if I'm not mistaken, reported a little bit earlier today. But it's heating up, and that's 9 out of 10 for the Warriors now. That's 9 wins out of 10 games, with your one loss being something that you had a shot at the end. Klay Thompson got a look that he had to rush a little bit in Dallas. Yeah, Luka wasn't playing, but he had some guys missing too. Kamingo was still out for that one. Like, uh, so yeah. It's it's heating up. But look, 808 KMBR is the number. We've got the phones open. We got John Dickinson joining us any second here on Dubs OT. I don't know if JD is going to be out sipping his uh, Kolsch there at Golden One. I don't know if they serve it just like they do at Harmonic Brewing. But while I have a second here, I want to give you all the notice. Sunday against Utah, final game of the regular season. Both John Dickinson and yours truly will be present at Harmonic for the final game. So can't wait to see some of you if you're out. If you're out at Chase Center or Thrive City, come say what's up for Dubs OT with JD. It will be the final game of the regular season. It will not be the final game as the Warriors will play next Wednesday if they're 9 or 10. But as I mentioned at the top of the show, Tuesday is still on the table. A lot of good sound to get to tonight. We're going to hear from Steve Kerr, as we always do. I imagine we'll get some Kavon Looney at the podium. We had Kavon Looney on NBC Sports Bay Area from the court. And a tip of the cap to Drew Down, who has entered the chat. Boo-hoo, I don't care. One of the great Drew Down quotes. Getting the win is all that matters. Jacob, if I'm not mistaken, do we have the connection with John Dickinson? We do. JD, super reporter out in Sacramento, present for Kings Pels. How are you, my guy? What's going on, Greg? Good to, good to be with you, brother. Yeah, uh, that Warriors win was hideous, but it was a win. And uh, yeah, the Kings never led uh, in their game tonight against the Pelicans. Pelicans by as many as 23 and the Kings made their run. I think they cut it to within five at one point in the third quarter. Pelicans ended up putting the game away, though, toward the end of the third quarter and then in the fourth. Uh, but, yeah, uh, good to be with you, my man. Uh, I mentioned it the other night, just kind of on a whim. that We might just, you know, hey, might as well just take this bad boy to Sacramento, check out the, 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 the Dubs, uh, you know, opponent that they're going to be facing coming up on uh, on Friday night. And, uh, you know, these teams are all interconnected right now as far as the, the Western Conference playoff race and, and, and all of that goes. And so I, I think it turns out, Greg, as ugly as it was uh, for the Warriors in Portland, because we are going to make the primary focus of this show 
the Warriors 100 to 92 win against the Blazers. As ugly as it was, I think tonight wound up being, when it's all said and done now, the perfect outcome for the Warriors as, as far as having the opportunity to move up. Yeah, they got off to a, a pretty brutal start. They weren't locked in early. Five turnovers in the first four minutes. You know, Kaminga and Wiggins are both turning it over. The Warriors are missing layups. They're not making shots. Steph is really struggling, but they fought. And it was kind of a grinder game for the Warriors. It, it looked a lot at many different points as if they were going to lose it. And and all I kept thinking uh, from from Sacramento was, wow, if the Warriors blow this opportunity, it, it would just it would be right up there, not in terms of like a blown game or a blown lead, but it would feel very much like what we've seen the Warriors do uh, at different points uh, over the course of, of this season. Just missed opportunities to be in better position uh, than they actually are. So to see them be able to pull it out, uh, even though they didn't play all that well and, and the 16 to one run there for the Warriors in the in the fourth quarter to, to prevail. Uh, I think when you look at it and you take a deep breath, the Warriors now are in great shape moving toward tomorrow, and it's the best possible outcome because I, I think you know, the Warriors, obviously, if they're going to move up, are going to have to win out. Like we knew that. You got to win tonight. You got to beat Utah Sunday. You got to beat the Pelicans tomorrow, which is going to be the, the most difficult game. But to me, as far as the other things, Greg, that the Warriors needed to have happen, the, the, best path toward those things happening is just the Warriors winning out and the Kings losing to the Pelicans and then losing to the Suns. And who knows, maybe the Kings go in and and beat the Suns tomorrow at, at home in the second of a back-to-back and, and it winds up where they hold on to the eight and the Warriors end up holding on to the nine if they win the last couple of games. But it feels like the Warriors have a legitimate chance. We're all going to be doing the scoreboard watching thing from Chase and Harmonic Brewing tomorrow night. But I think some nights and some games, you just got to take a deep breath and and accept the end result as opposed to how you got there. How the Warriors got there tonight, I think in a lot of ways is completely irrelevant. They rolled the dice. They you know, kind of r- tried to have their cake and eat it too in terms of resting while also believing that they can you know still win. Uh, and it ended up working out. So I, I don't think tonight's the kind of game where we nitpick it as far as, you know, the bad things as opposed to, hey, they're going to have to be a hell of a lot better, obviously, tomorrow. But now they are fighting for something that is, I think, relatively, you know, I don't want to say easily attainable because you're still counting on a really good team to lose a home game in order for that to happen tomorrow with Sacramento. But but it gives you something to play for tomorrow when the Warriors figure to be uh, at, at full strength. And I'll tell you another thing, the Pelicans don't necessarily need tomorrow as much. They're, they're kind of rooting for the, you know, the Pelicans at this point are, are, you know, they need tomorrow to try and stave off uh, Phoenix. So they're going to be fighting, but, you know, the Pelicans were kind of staring that worst case scenario before tonight to where maybe they could end up like ninth or 10th if things completely went to uh, awry on them. So uh, they've got some other opportunities to be able to still hold off Phoenix that aren't as contingent, although they're going to be doing the opposite of what the Warriors are doing. They're going to be rooting for the Kings tomorrow to beat the Suns because they don't have the tiebreaker head to head. The Pelicans don't against, against Phoenix. So it, it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to do it again tomorrow. Uh, I heard a little bit of your, your open there before I joined you, Greg, but you know, I, I think, I think the proper, the proper thing is to just take a quick deep breath. All the warrior fans just take a deep breath and, and, and understand that it wasn't pretty. And there aren't really a lot of grandiose takeaways. The warriors asked for it. They set themselves up for it, but they ended up getting the win. No, I think that's spot on. I think a lot of what you said overlapped with a good chunk of what I said. I don't know exactly where you jumped in, but yeah, it doesn't matter at the end, right? It's all the result. They got the win at the time when it was looking a little dicey there early fourth, we're looking at Kings Pelicans. Like, I don't know if we need to worry too much about this game because if the Warriors can't take care of business here, it's not going to matter. But here we are. It does. The Kings, Warriors, and Lakers now all tied for the eighth seed, technically. Although we can get into all the scenarios and what it means to play New Orleans on a back-to-back tomorrow night, which we will do for a large part of the rest of the show. It is Dubs OT with JD, who's out in sack. 
I'm Greg Silver, and I will go back behind the glass soon. 808 KMBR is the number if you want to call in. And uh, and look, before we get to break, I just want to say this to you, JD, and kind of get your take on it. A lot of fans were eager to get the young players in a more prominent role earlier in the season. I think it became a pretty universally known fact that the young players were needed for success. But a night like tonight also makes me understand why Steve Kerr and the staff were maybe a little bit more reluctant to just pull the trigger on that move and to give the vets a longer leash because look at tonight, it was two players who are just gritty and have kind of been through this many times and know how to win in Steph Curry and Kevon Looney that really tilted the scale on this one for the Warriors. Yeah, Steve Kerr had said it. And, you know, I think some people kind of laughed, but he said, hey, there's going to be a point in which Kevon Looney would be needed again and, and that he was going to go to him and he was going to get an opportunity to, to help this team in an in a important moment. And, you know, as it turns out with the Warriors choosing to to not play Draymond Green tonight, uh, Trace Jackson Davis, you know, the starter, but and I thought effective uh, in this one. Uh, 10 points, eight boards, four assists, four blocks. I mean, tied his career high in blocks, played 27 minutes, but Looney was a part of that 16 to one run that, that the Warriors needed there down the stretch to, to, to win the game. Plus 19 for Kevon Looney uh, in, in his 20 minutes, nine points, 11 boards, four offensive rebounds. He had four blocks to go with the Trace Jackson Davis four blocks and the Warriors had 13 blocks. But I all I could think about tonight, Greg, was Steve Kerr saying, hey, there's going to be a moment where Kevon Looney's going to be needed and I'm going to go to him and he's going to help this team in, in that big moment. And it, it, it came to fruition. Big moments don't always have to be the games against the Pelicans or the Lakers or Denver. Uh, th- this was if the Warriors wind up moving up and again, it's still a big if, but if they wind up moving up here over the course of the final couple of days of the regular season to where they can avoid the 9-10 game, Kevon Looney will have had a huge part uh, of the say in, in the reason why, because they won this game when it looked like it had the potential to, to really get away from them. Yeah, it sure did. And uh, we're going to take a quick break right now, and then we'll kind of get settled back into the normal rhythm. John Dickinson out in Sacramento Big thank you to Jacob for holding it down behind the glass as we got this show started. It is Dubs OT with JD and a little bit of Greg Silver on KMBR 104.5 and 680, the sports leader.
Now that spring is here, Golden State Lumber and Building Materials can get you one step closer to an ultimate outdoor living space. They partner with Trex, the largest... All right, we still got a minute 15. ...with options for every home and every budget. TimberTech is another leader in decking with natural wood appearance made from 85% recycled materials. Talk with your builder or contractor about Golden State, celebrating 70 years in the Bay Area. When you succeed, we succeed. At Charmin, we heard you should talk about going to the bathroom in public. So we decided to think about it. When you from Charmin, I hope. How, how long is this break, by the way? Uh, this was a five. No, this was a, yeah, it was a five. For the ones who work hard to ensure their career. It's all good. We can, we can stay on for a while after this one. Um, yeah, we're, uh, we're back in 10. This is KNBR, and this is Dubs OT with John Dickinson, streaming live on YouTube at KNBR 104.5. Lady with a steal! Steph running! Steph to Pajewski to lay it up! That's why Looney's in the game. The experience. He knew they're trying to get it to Aiden. He ran through that one. And then Steph just took his time. Don't turn it over. Chris Paul was ahead of the play. Got out of the way. He's like, you know what? I'm not going to be involved here. You guys take care of it. It's so well done. All right. Welcome back. It is Dubs OT. With JD here on KMBR, 808 KMBR is the number, 415-808-5627 to join the conversation here as uh, the Warriors get the win 100-92 to in Portland, 25 road wins for the Warriors. We've got Greg Silver back in our San Francisco studios as well as uh, the Warriors uh, back in action tomorrow against the Pelicans at Chase Center and still an opportunity to move up now controlling their own destiny as they already did for the nine spot uh, in the Western Conference. If they can win tomorrow and Sunday, they will be ninth uh, and they would host the 9-10 play in game if they have to win to play in games, but there is an opportunity still to move to eighth contingent on what happens between Sacramento and Phoenix. Those two teams set to play tomorrow, Warriors and Pelicans, as I mentioned, playing tomorrow. So it's like a little mini play in tournament tomorrow with uh, teams trying to either avoid the play, the actual play in tournament or improve their position in the actual play in tournament, which is uh, set to get rolling uh, on Tuesday uh, across the NBA with games to be played on Tuesday, Wednesday, and next Friday. So nine of 10 in the win column for the Warriors uh, as they get the job done. It was not pretty by any stretch of the imagination, but the Warriors do win it. 100 to 92, uh, ugly, ugly, ugly start to this one. I mean, the Warriors just were not locked in. They were not energetic. Uh, they had five turnovers in the first four minutes. Jonathan Kaminga and Andrew Wiggins had a pair of those turnovers each. They were missing layups. They weren't hitting shots. They got down 19 to 10. Uh, the, the lone saving grace really out of that first quarter was a, a 12-3 run to close uh, after the Warriors had, had gotten down by nine. Uh, they were down seven, had the 12-0 run that ended a 12, in a 12-3 run. The Blazers had the final three of the quarter. And you look up at the end of the quarter, and, and the Warriors somehow were up 24-22. It was kind of that night for the Warriors, really, throughout the first and the second quarters, where they just weren't doing much well at all. But they were, they were either hanging in or by the end of the quarters uh, were ahead uh, in this game. They actually built on their lead in the second quarter after the Blazers went on an 11-3 run. Uh, you know, Pajemski was making plays, 
the defense I thought was good. I thought the spirit tonight was good. It just looked like the Warriors did not have energy. Uh, you know, Kaminga, Curry, Wiggins were doing the scoring load, but uh, as we talked about, none of them uh, were particularly efficient or or could make the case that that they played well. Although Curry did pull the Warriors toward the finish line as he so often does in the final five, six minutes as the Warriors would have the 16 to one run in the fourth quarter. And uh, that would be enough uh, as Kavon Looney contributing to that game ball to Kavon Looney for, for the Warriors uh, in, in this one big time run over about a six minute stretch and, and the Warriors survive it uh, to get the 100 to 92 win a 25, 18 advantage in the fourth quarter. And now all eyes turn to the second of the back-to-back as the Warriors are going to host the Pelicans tomorrow night. Pelicans won in Sacramento tonight, 135 to 123. They jumped out to a a 23-point lead, actually never trailed in the game, although the Kings did make it to close at a couple of different points, but the Pelicans able to to hold off Sacramento down the stretch uh, and lead by as many as 23 again in the fourth quarter of that one. So the Pelicans keep their lead and hold right now on the sixth spot in the uh, play-in tournament and in the playoff race. Uh, But the Pelicans have to stay ahead of Phoenix. So the Pelicans are going to be a highly motivated team tomorrow. Uh, to you know, keep their one-game lead that they currently hold over the Suns. In fact, uh, they could wrap it up tomorrow if they could win in Chase Center and the Suns could lose to the Kings. Suns and Kings are going to play in Sacramento. So while the Warriors are going to be trying to get a win against the Pels and hoping that, that Phoenix can beat Sacramento – Tomorrow in Sacramento, the Pelicans are going to be doing the exact opposite, trying to hold on to that six seed and maybe even clinch that six seed uh, if if they can get the win and, and have the game in Sacramento tomorrow go the opposite direction. Again, what's at stake tomorrow? And I've already seen a little bit of kind of back and forth because the Warriors did look so just tired and slow and uninspired for good chunks of this game tonight kind of the debate about what do you do tomorrow and the Warriors have really tried to to have their cake and eat it too I think this week they rested Curry on Sunday they they rested Draymond and Clay tonight along with Gary Payton the second they risked that they could win the game without those guys it paid off it was a lot harder than I think they would have anticipated against the the young athletic Blazers squad that was a lot of no names plus Scoot Henderson but they found a way to get the job done And already kind of have seen a little bit on social media, the debate about, you know, would you just take the the rest over the ability to move up? And that's going to be our our, our question of the night. And I think we we already know what the Warriors are going to do. To me, it's a no brainer. And we'll bring in Greg and we'll get to the phones and we'll kind of set the table here for for what can be our question of the night between now and and 11 o'clock. But I, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, you've got one more night to go for it. And, you know, that's tomorrow. If if you lose tomorrow, then you're probably going to be 10th anyway. So you might as well play it all out tomorrow. And, and if you lose tomorrow and you're basically going to be 10th at that point, then if you want to rest everybody Sunday, rest everybody Sunday. And then you would, by the way, if you're 10th or in the 9-10 game, you get an extra day of rest before you have to start. So to me, it's a no-brainer. But I've seen the debate as far as, well, what do you do tomorrow? This team, you know, do you just because it's no guarantee that you're going to move up. You need help. And the help that you need is Phoenix beating Sacramento in addition to a Warriors win. But to me, you go try to get that game tomorrow at home. And if you can get it and you get the right outcome in Sacramento, then all you got to do is beat Utah and you're the eight. And that gives you two chances to win one game. And so and it gives you an extra day off in between the first game and the second game if you have to play the second game it gives you a chance if you can get to eight and again this is why i would fight for tomorrow even though you may not get it if you get to eight you win you're the seven and you don't play in all likelihood denver who now controls their own destiny for the one and if you win you don't have to play till saturday from tuesday so to me there is enough to play for tomorrow even though it's not a lock, the Pelicans could absolutely beat the Warriors. Even though it's not a lock, the Kings could absolutely beat the Suns tomorrow in Sacramento in a game where they're going to be desperate to be hanging on to the 7-8 the game. 
uh, as far as the, the Kings go, who have been leaky, losing to OKC in Boston and New York here over the course of the last week, they are going to be desperate to hang on. Uh, and so it really sets up, I think, a fascinating Friday night uh, across the Western Conference playoff and, and, and play in races. But but to me, Greg, to me, Greg, it is you, you got to go for it and and then let the chips fall where they may, depending upon where things sit at the end of the night tomorrow, because the Kings are playing Portland on Sunday. You wouldn't count on that. Uh, and, and so, you know, I, again, I think you got to play it out and go full bore and bring everybody back and play, play Steph. I know Steve already said in the postgame press conference, from what I read, they're not resting Curry tomorrow, but to me, you still have an opportunity. Yeah, I think there's no doubt about it. I don't think you would even play around with having Draymond and clay rest tonight or, you know, quote unquote rest. They had, you know, clay has got the knee tendonitis and after Kaminga missed, all those games. I don't really want to act like tendonitis is nothing, but yeah, you got to do it. And with the Kings losing and the eight seed really being in grasp and then a chance to go get the seven, like everything you just laid out on the table, JD, that's why you give it everything you have tomorrow. And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. And if you got to be 10, you got to be 10. And that's where you were going into the week. But this is the biggest pulse they have had in months, because even when they've gotten it rolling, They've moved from like 11 to 10 and maybe 10 to nine for a second, but they've just been stuck at 10. And now you have a chance to get eight. Of course you got to go for it. Yeah. To be honest, like if it came down to, you know, hanging on to hanging on to nine versus 10 and going for eight, I would go for eight and just, and forget about being nine. Like, like I I would, I, I would be much more apt to say, you know what? If we win, we're nine versus we lose, we're t- like to me, that doesn't matter nearly now might matter to Joe Lake for, for reasons we've laid out over the last couple of days, because it means a home home gate as opposed to going down to crypto.com arena. But we've just seen the Warriors win a couple of games at, at the crypt uh, over the course of the last couple of weeks. To me, you got to go uh, all in. All right. 808 KMBR is the number 415-808-5627. And uh, we got a couple of people on the line. Let's get it rolling with Bruce tonight in San Jose on the Sports Leader. Hey, Bruce. Yeah, hey, J.D. Uh, thanks for taking the call. And also thanks to Greg, uh, to both you guys, for a great show. And uh, pretty much I agree with the last, you know, segments you guys were uh, talking about. Now that, you know, we won tonight, it was a huge gamble, though, with us, you know, <laughs> sitting Clay and Draymond and, and GP2. Like uh, Greg said, is the tendonitis? I, I I don't know. It was a gamble tonight, but now that we won one, I don't know. Now I still agree with you guys. Go for the eight seed, and then if not, well, it doesn't matter to me nine or ten, you know, because I don't know. That that that's why I say go go for it now. Go for it now. Yeah, and and look, if Sacramento wins tomorrow night, then you pro- then you can't get it anyway, and so you you can play around. Then if you want to take an extra day Sunday or you treat Sunday as a as a preseason game or or whatever it is, you know, to me you have some flexibility at that point. But but for one night, like the Warriors could have, I mean, th- for the last three weeks they couldn't have dreamed to be the eight seed, to have a chance at the eight seed, and all they need to do is get one home win. While while Sacramento takes you know one loss with all of these teams basically fighting for for a, you know they're all fighting for something everybody playing tomorrow is fighting for something so it should be quality basketball it should be high level and to me why, you know you might not shoot your shot because if you end up eight come Sunday afternoon you would feel like it was I mean I, I don't want to say a miracle Bruce but it would just be like like how did this freaking happen no, exactly <laughs> given yeah. Uh, like you could ride that high, I think, into the whole play-in week. No, I think you could ride that momentum for sure. And then, like the record, the whole second half, we've been very positive. Probably one of the best teams in the second half. So, just keep the rotation going. Yeah, no, thanks. Appreciate it, Bruce. Thank you. 808KMBR is the number. Bruce getting us tipped off here. It's Dubs OT with JD, our uh, play-in tournament special edition here on KMBR, the sports leader. Uh, appreciate everybody watching on YouTube and Twitch as well. As so We will definitely get to the good folks who are always with us uh, on YouTube and Twitch and the KMBR Twitter stream as well. I see you, Joe Schmo. I see you, Bill M. I see you, Buko Sports. 
I, I see you, uh, Judith Pierre. Good evening to you, Judith. Judith, I haven't seen you in the chat uh, the, the the last couple of couple of shows. Apologies if I've missed you. By the way, I know you're I know you're watching, even if maybe you're not uh, chiming in uh, on on the chat. Uh, Irwin Kwong, of course, San Jose Jazz fan. The third Rock and New Era '84 uh, had tweeted at me earlier. Uh, JD, did you make the trip? Yes, I did. I made the trip to uh, to Sacramento to take in the Pelicans and the Kings tonight. And again, I think the Warriors got the outcome that they were looking for uh, as far as tonight's games go. Back to the phones. We go here as we get closer to the top of the 10 o'clock hour. And we'll keep things going until about 11 tonight here on the Sports Leader. But Danny in Vancouver is next here on Dubs OT. What's going on, Danny? Hey, Mr. Dickinson. How are you, sir? I'm doing well, my man. Good to uh, good to have you on, and uh, thanks again for saying hi the other night at uh, Harmonic. Thank you. Nice, always pleasure to see you. Thanks for the good advice about the LA game. I asked you if they were going to play everyone, and you were absolutely right. It was actually one of the best games of the year. I thought, shoot, offensive wise. So thanks, thanks for that recommendation. Yeah, um, that was fun. That was fun, no yeah, doubt. That was a good was- one to be at. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so a couple thoughts. I, I, I like following your Twitter comments during the game because horrific was it was a, a good word. I could also say hideous or hellacious. I thought was that yes. effort uh, for most of it. Um, and I, I didn't know if I didn't know necessarily agree with you 100 percent that that uh, that Kerr was resting. But I, I, I was really disturbed by sort of the, the effort and how, how sloppy they were at the beginning. But um, that being said, they pulled it off. Um, I, I, I just want to tell you how much um, um, kudos I want to, I want to give to, to K- Kevon Looney. I mean, K- that guy's amazing. I mean, you know, he, he hasn't played, he's such a professional. He comes in and I, and I thought he, he was the difference in the game. I really do. I thought he played so well. Unfortunately, I didn't think Jackson uh, was doing very well against um, Aiton, and I thought he was getting killed by Aiton inside. Curious what you thought. And I agree, last comment, is that 100% they have to go for it. I mean, unfortunately, they don't have any any wiggle room, any margin of error. It, you know, it's on them. They're playing great, but they just don't have any margin of error, so they have to go for it. Uh, have to go for it tomorrow, and if, you know, Utah's uh, meaningless game, absolutely, you know, maybe just play the subs. So anyways, thanks again. Enjoy the show as always. And uh, we'll talk again soon. Yeah. Appreciate it, Danny. Thanks a lot. Uh, Danny's line open 808 KMBR. Always appreciate Danny. And uh, yeah, Danny had asked me, Hey, do you think I should go down to the Laker game uh, on, on Tuesday? I think he was going to be in LA. And he said, should I get tickets? Should I not? I said, no, I, I think they're going to be playing everybody for that one. And yeah, it was uh, a historic Three point shooting extravaganza for for the Warriors on on full display. So Danny had a good time uh, down there. I mean, Greg, there's just not much you can say more about Looney in this one. I mean, it really. I mean, he really was. You could make the case the best player on the court for the Warriors tonight. I, I mean, if not the most impactful. I mean, he he really. And you know, sometimes against some opponents. Steady does the trick and st- like steady is all you need. And, you know, Looney's had a down year. I do think he's played better when he has gotten limited opportunities of late. And look, this doesn't mean that Looney's now going to be a member of the playoff rotation or any of that. It's funny how we don't do that with veteran players. I, I was just thinking about this tonight. Like we don't do the whole he's got to be in the rotation now. When, when a veteran player does it, like, but if Trace Jackson, if it was flipped and Trace Jackson Davis did it, everybody would be saying, he's got to be in the rotation now in the, in the, in the, in the playoffs and the play in. No, I, I, I thought, you know, TJD is still learning, I, I think, to defend the, you know, guys that have been in the league that are seven footers that, that have their own presence. Uh, he's learning. He, I think he's, he has been more than effective in his own way. But sometimes steady is what you need, and a veteran presence is what you need, and that's why you you still have Kevon Looney on the roster. And Steve went to him, and it was just it was just the perfect moment to go to him and to have him be a part of that big run and be able to you know finish help them finish the game off. It was it, it was just it was exactly as Steve Kerr had advertised it when Steve Kerr advertised it. I don't know, maybe two months ago. 
as he pulled Looney from the rotation and Looney had his consecutive game streak end and everybody kind of had to deal with the fact that somebody that's been such a key figure as far as their championship runs uh, that, that maybe wasn't going to be as big a part of it moving forward. Yeah, I mean, I'm not shy about my personal feelings toward Kevon Looney and what he's been to the Warriors franchise, but I also just got to say that it is such a blessing for Steve Kerr and the Golden State Warriors as an organization that Looney has the temperament that he does because he can work really hard to play however many games he did in a row with an incredible streak, get his DNPs in the rotation because they're trying to get Trace Jackson Davis more reps and he hasn't been as effective this year. Uh, Looney, I'm saying, hasn't been as effective. And then for him to just get called on at any given time and still to come in with the same attitude of, yeah, I'm going to work hard. I'm going to play defense. I'm going to do the little things it takes to try to win. Looney is never going to tip the scale and move the needle for a win in the way. I don't want to say never because he's done it in the playoffs a couple of times on his own, but rarely will he be the guy like Steph or Clay or even Draymond has of just kind of taking over and being that guy to tip the scale. But I also feel like it is 95% of the time it's more of a plus than a minus to have him out there. And when it's not his night and it's not playing well, it's not detrimental to the team for anything beyond the court. So I think tonight was a great example of you got to have your guys that are grownups. I think that's why Chris Paul is very well liked in the organization. And this is not to rag on the young guys or anything, because I think that they've been a really important part of the team this year. But you look at a night like tonight, JD and you know, Kamingo, wasn't great outside of some scoring and Moses Moody by and large kind of struggled and Pajemski had some nice moments, but also didn't look as sharp in certain areas too. And Trace Jackson Davis can get cooked on defense at times. So I think that sometimes in games like this, especially against younger teams, when they have energy and they can take it to you, you just need to move the chains and you do that with the people that just know how to win. Yeah, and 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 that's what the Warriors were able to do tonight. It wasn't pretty. In fact, for the most part, it was it was really ugly. Uh, but the Warriors do survive. They win sixteen to one run in the fourth quarter. One hundred to ninety two is the final, and so the Warriors live to fight another day as far as the play in tournament race goes uh, in the Western Conference and the ability to move forward. Uh, should they get a little bit more help? Again, tomorrow's not going to be easy. Uh, I watched the Pelicans as I was watching the Warriors and and the uh, Blazers. I'm, I was watching the Pelicans and the Kings, and the, the Pelicans dismantled the Kings for good chunks of this game. They beat them five times this year. The Pelicans had a five-game season series sweep over the Kings. Uh, and you know their defense is flying around. They've got some size with Valanciunas and and obviously Zion Williamson. They've got some shooters. Uh, you know that's a really good team. CJ McCollum looked like 2018 Portland CJ McCollum uh, tonight uh, in terms of his offense. I mean he hit dagger after dagger after dagger. CJ McCollum was nine of twelve from three tonight. Trey Murphy was going off with twenty in the first half, six of twelve from three. Really, the Pelicans I thought outshot a potential disaster in making 22 of 40 from three point range. So if you're the Warriors, you're hoping that that hot night doesn't continue uh, on the second of the back to back at, at, at chase center tomorrow. Let's keep it going on the phone lines. Eric in San Francisco is next here. It's dubs OT with JD. It's a Thursday night. The Warriors win their 25th on the road and they've got action to potentially move up uh, in the play in tournament. What's going on tonight, Eric. Hey, JD. Um, yeah, I wanted to talk about uh, two things. One is the rest versus uh, going for it. I mean, anybody who's saying rest is absolutely positively insane because not only do, do we have the chance to move up to the seventh seed, but if we lose and we go down, to the, even if we made the play-in, we'd be at eight and we're playing the Nuggets in the first round. And anybody who thinks... We're beating the Nuggets with Jokic in the first round. Didn't watch the Minnesota game last night. That's all I got to say about yeah. that. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, no doubt. Well, you know, and, and look, and the Warriors haven't beaten them. The Warriors haven't beaten this iteration of the Nuggets one time in the last two seasons. They were yeah. they got three games swept 
and four games swept. And, and so, you know, this iteration of the Nuggets that won the title last year and is trying to defend it this year with Gordon and Caldwell Pope and Murray and, and Jokic and, and Porter, you know, that, that group is 7-0 and against the Warriors the last two years. Right. I mean, so, like, I just I don't uh, – they know how to close games, which was clear. The Timberwolves were up. And the, the Nuggets. They closed. remind me of the so, Warriors a little bit. They remind me of yes. when the Warriors had their their crew, you know, the first couple of mm-hmm. years. Maybe not as dominant, 14, 15, but the fourteen fifteen. But the yeah, yes, but the ability to close and the connectivity between their best five. Yeah. Their best five is connected, and they complement each other beautifully. Right. So, so the, on that, that's on the rest thing. And my my other point is is. I think uh, there's a good enough sample size to say that anybody who thinks that the better lineup is Draymond TJD than Draymond Kaminga isn't really looking at the games that we played well in or where there's not a dominant center or even a guy who has good post skills. But every time he's gone up against Jokic or even like Aiton, who's been on a nice little run tonight, owned him like – and we don't have anybody who can create their own shot besides Steph and Kaminga. Like, Wiggins, not really great at getting a good shot off. And with Drayvon's not getting his own shot off, and PJD's not getting his own shot off. So, like, I just don't see this argument that it's not better to start Kaminga and Draymond and then supplement with PJD by sub- subbing out Draymond early in the first quarter to have him help anchor part of the bench on the second quarter, let Kaminga and TJD close the first and keep a rotation like that, as opposed to making Kaminga this like the super score sub off the bench. Cause I just don't think we generate enough offense and TJD hasn't shown enough improvement at, at this stage in his career to go up against playoff caliber centers. That's what I'm talking about. Playoff caliber centers. Yeah, no, I agree with that point. Uh, and and look, I think that's going to be in flux. Like, I, I don't think that there's a there's a hard and fast decision as to it's definitely going to be TJD and Draymond. And if it is, it it could change within one game. Like, it, it yeah. really could. And and it could go back to Kaminga and Draymond. Hell, it, it could even be, as we saw a little bit tonight, Looney getting dusted off against some of these guys. Uh, you know, especially some of the guys that maybe he's had some some success against in the past. So uh, I I think they like the way that they've played with that group of late. Uh, but I again, as we've seen with the Warriors in the playoffs, they they will throw yep. a, a lineup right out into the bay. You know, it w- in in less than one game. So I I, I think. Um, you know, if it does start that way, there's, there's no, it, it doesn't mean it's going to end that way. Eric, thank you so much. Yep. Appreciate it. Good call from Eric in San Francisco, 808 KMBR, 415, 808-5627 as the Warriors win 192 in Portland. It's now a three-way tie for eight, nine, and 10 in the Western Conference, Sacramento, the Warriors, and the Lakers all 45 and 35 everybody's got two games to go everybody plays tomorrow everybody plays sunday afternoon and then we'll figure out where things stand at that particular uh point in time but uh, yeah the, the warriors in a position where they can still very much be able to to move up and it'll all be contingent on what happens uh, tomorrow night, really. And so, yeah, the Warriors did look tired, did look sluggish, but I, I think, you know, they they got to go for it tomorrow. They, they got to absolutely go for it tomorrow. Let's uh, keep it going with uh, Irv and Berkeley. We got people on the phone lines. What's going on, Irv? You're next here on Dubs OT on the Sports Leader. Can you, can you hear me? I got you loud and clear, Irv. Okay. I just want to say um, there was a caller that said how Denver – we have and we haven't beaten them, but Denver. I'm not really worried about Denver if the Warrior, if Clay Thompson and Curry can shoot good, and we can get contribute contributions from um, Green and 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 Jackson. I think those are our key guys, and then um, hopefully Kaminga and Wiggins can help um, at that point, and maybe even Looney. 
that that oh and last thing last thing um another important person the caller before was talking about uh i think his name Przinski i don't know how to say it pod i think i'll just call him pod um you got it right he does a you great got it right create- okay okay he does a great job mm. of creating for himself and others and he does the rebounding so he's a forgotten guy that we don't need, that that wasn't talked about, but he's an important uh, piece to us as well. Yeah, he was big tonight, Irv, uh, on a night where there weren't you know a lot of people weren't playing well. He was a plus thirteen tonight. He took another charge. He does always rebound. There were a couple times he set up Kaminga tonight for for easy buckets, which which I thought were important. Uh, and he plays bigger than his guard size. In, in terms of yeah. the rebounding and, and ability to stick his body in. And, you know, he's, he's just unafraid. You know, some guys don't like getting hit. Pajemski doesn't mind getting hit. And he'll get right back up and, and, and shake it off and keep playing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So go Warriors. No, he, that, that's all I had to say. Yeah, appreciate it, Irv. No, I, I, I thanks for the call. Yeah, Pajemski was an, an unsung hero tonight. And, and you know, look, Steve Kerr is as big a Pajemski guy as everybody. In fact, at, at times... Uh, he even gets ridiculed for maybe being a, a little bit too much of a Pajemski guy from uh, some of the, the the fan base. So 808 KMBR, we'll keep this thing moving here. It is Dubs OT with JD on the Sports Leader. Appreciate people watching on, on YouTube and Twitch. We got uh, a lot of people in uh, the YouTube chat tonight and watching us on the Twitter stream as well. Uh, these last couple of nights have, have just been outstanding. Uh, just dissecting the good, the bad, and the ugly here from the Warriors' victory in Portland. It was not pretty, but they do find a way to uh, get the job done tonight uh, and have a shot potentially to move up if they can get tomorrow and get a little bit of help. Duck Sauce is next in San Jose. What's going on, Duck Sauce? You're on the Sports Leader. J.D., what's up, my guy? Uh, How you doing, man? Win. Good, good, man. Good, ugly win. Uh, but, you know, a win's a win. Um, like you said, game ball to Looney tonight. I thought he completely changed the game in the fourth quarter. Uh, I, I wonder, you know, if, if Kerr's going to have to rethink maybe where he's cutting the rotation off in the playoffs just because of how good a, he is on the offensive glass. I mean, I don't know how many times we've seen him bail us out in fourth quarters just keeping possessions alive, you know, so. I, I'm wondering what your thoughts are on that, and then also, you know, um, the only the only thing, Duck Sauce. Let me jump in real quick here. I'll let you finish your your point. Yep. I, the one thing about a a big, you can always kind of add another big for three or four minutes here or there. That that's a pretty easy thing to do. To where it's like maybe they're not a full member of the rotation, but if you just need a a, a change of pace, like maybe you don't like what you're getting from TJD. Or maybe you want to give a big who's starting to get rolling a little bit a different look. Like you could almost split your center minutes different than than some of the other positions. Like it, it like who's to say it can't be? Hey, Steve Kerr wants to play his nine or his ten, and and maybe that you know that means the normal nine plus maybe Moody a few minutes or maybe not Moody depending upon the night. But then, you know what? The center rotation is going to be six minutes of TJD, maybe six minutes of Looney. Then, you know, maybe maybe six minutes of Draymond and it, like you can kind of break it up almost in quarters of each half and 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 split it up that way to where, you know, you can give somebody some extra run if you think he can help. So I, I think it's easier to do. I gave you the long winded answer, uh, Duck Sauce, but the, uh, it's it, I think it's easy to fit one more big in for a couple minutes here and there than it is to maybe do with a wing player that really has to stretch out and get into the flow of the game. No, yeah, that's a that's a that's a good point. You're right about that. Um, the other thing I was wanted to say is, uh, I thought you know for most of the night, um, Scoot was looking a little too comfortable, and I thought we did a much better job on the fourth quarter on him. I thought you know Pajemski was big. I think it was Pajemski who kind of who kind of changed that. Um, and then the last thing is, uh, you know, with Kaminga, I thought he found a way to still you know be impactful in a positive tonight. It wasn't his best overall night, that's for sure, but. What I see is, like, kind of speaking to how you talk about him, is he a three or a four? Like, to me, like, where he starts his point of attack is a big deal because if he gets it too high, J.D., like, that's when he starts to get a little too side to side for me. Whereas if they run action for him around, like, 15 to 17 feet, I think it it kind of forces him to keep it more straight line drive and a little more simple. You know what I mean? Instead of getting too herky-jerky with the handle. So 
that's just what I see. I like to see them run a little more action for him, you know, a little closer to the basket. I think he's more effective that way. So, but that's my time, man. I, I appreciate it, JD. Have a good night, man. Yeah, thanks, Duck Sauce. Yeah, it, it's basically treat him like he's more of a big. I mean, it it really is, and and it's the stuff when the defense is off balance too, to where you know the defense is off balance because of the gravity or the ball movement, and he can just take it, and he doesn't have to have a great handle because the lane is wide open, or he can beat somebody with one step and then go up, and 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 put it down or put it in like that. Yeah, when Kaminga's at his best, it it is absolutely straight line to the bucket not fiddle faddling with the dribble out high not looking to shoot pull up jumpers like he's Kevin Durant like it's it's get to the cup and so yeah i think that's that is part of what you know Steve Kerr at one point this year had said you know we like his and i'm paraphrasing we like the shots that he gets at the four and so I think, you know, that what that means is it's, you know, you can work him in at the dunker spot. It's more of that short, almost post plays where he gets it and he just kind of goes as opposed to, you know, too much of on the wing with somebody on him, got to dribble around, you know, that, that, yeah, that's when it, it bogs down a little bit. That's when the turnovers come uh, from, from time to time. And, and even when he's playing the four, he still gets the ball sometimes in that position. I, I agree, Greg, with the overarching point of Kaminga found a way you know, they needed his scoring tonight. And I know we were kind of go back and forth during the game a, a little bit about, uh, you know, is, is he going to be a part of the finishing lineup tonight? Like, is there somebody else maybe Kirk could even go to because Kaminga Kaminga at times was, was pretty bad tonight. Like whether it was defense, uh, you know, l- losing his man, getting beat off the dribble. The turnovers were just horrendous tonight uh, at times. But the one thing that I kept saying to you, Greg, was, well, they need a scoring. And, and you know, he ended up with 19 points. And he did score efficiently if you if you take out the turnovers, which you kind of can't do. But but he did score efficiently tonight. And, you know, if, if Kirk quits on him and they only get 11 out of him, Maybe they lose because there's no guarantee that the guy they would have put in can get a bucket. And so I, I, I think I give Kaminga some credit for for sticking with it and still, you know, finding a way on a bad night. And I do think this was a bad night in every other way other than he figured out a way to get some buckets. Uh, then then, you know, that's that's important. You know, that's still that's still I mean, he was still a positive player tonight because he was out there down the stretch with the you know with Looney and 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 with Steph as the Warriors were were flipping the game and putting it away. I think that's the right take that you had in the middle of the game saying that it's been a rough night for Kaminga but they needed his scoring and they did and it's not like Moses Moody was having a great game or Andrew Wiggins was having an incredible game to where you were finding ways to get buckets where it's like okay maybe we don't need Kaminga scoring that much and he's playing terribly. No, they kind of really did need it. I mean It was Looney, the only other post player that proved to be really effective there in the second half. And the only other guy that plays that Kaminga position at a high volume of minutes is Draymond, who wasn't available tonight. So you didn't have a lot of other places to turn. I mean, you could say Saric plays the four and he did get some minutes there in the second quarter tonight. But I think it was pretty clear that you take your chances on Kaminga against a team like Portland and just have him play through some of the struggles then go back to Saric and sacrifice defense in a game that's been really tight the whole way when you were losing by as much as six. Yeah, and and I think you know, it was kind of a tale of two halves, as a few people in the chat have, have said, and he did play better in the in the second half. And I I see you drew down. Uh no no drew down call tonight. Where's Drew? Come on, Drew down. Drew down. Every time we're we're not on the radio, Drew down's crushing us for not taking his phone call. We got a line open for you, Drew down. I even wanted Drew down to call in to talk about uh, Greg Oden and the Portland Trailblazers' history of draft selections. I thought that's what we were tonight. That's what we were doing tonight, JD. I thought that was on the program. I set out my producer schedule just for this moment. Yeah, no, I. I <laughs> he was going to call about Greg Oden tonight. Is that is seriously? Uh, no, no, I'm just, yeah, I'm just riffing because he always okay. uh, on the call screening always just tells me a very off-topic thing for what he wants to talk about that night. So that that was kind of what I was hoping for tonight. Yeah, Drew, down, get get uh, you know 
get wherever you are, find your phone and give us a shout. Talk to overnight, uh, Dave. 1020 here on, on the sports leader. Uh, yeah, look, it was, it, it, it was a win. <laughs> it, it was a win. Hey, the, and the Warriors got to, they got to 45 tonight, which is plus one to last year's record with, with two games to go. The Warriors held what they had to win their last five last year at the end of the year, just to get to 44. Right. So, uh, you know, to do that and, and to do it in two fewer games and to do it with all the games that they've kicked away, I think there is some, semblance of, of positivity as as far as that goes. Uh, but, but yeah, I, I look, I, I don't think, you know, tonight, as far as Kaminga goes, not a great night, but you gotta, you gotta ride, you gotta ride through it. You, you gotta ride through it. And it, you know, I think if you're not going to ride through it against Portland, then when are you going to ride through it uh, with, with Kaminga? Plus I also think he's still trying to work his way back. I think he's trying to to work his way back into a rhythm. He didn't start uh, a couple of games ago, the last couple of games. Now he is back in and in the starting lineup. He's probably not going to start tomorrow. So I think getting him comfortable with kind of being in flux and having the role change is is pretty important. Regulator, uh, Warriors assumed it was going to be an easy win. That's the problem. Underestimated the opponent. I don't know how you could underestimate the opponent when you're not having Draymond and Clay Thompson out there. Like to me, when it was announced that they weren't going to play along with GP2, I thought this game had the potential to be a lot more difficult. Warriors still no excuses kind of a game, but they risked it tonight. And look, I put it out there in the fourth quarter when the Warriors were up by one. You know, I said it point blank. They gambled. And, you know, if it doesn't come to fruition, if they had lost tonight, resting Steph, I'm sorry, resting Draymond and resting Clay and, and GP2. And I know those guys are legitimately banged up. They were on the injury report with, with injuries. But if you lose that game when you still at the end of the night would have had an opportunity to get the eight seed, then I think you would have deserved to be ripped for that. And and so, you know, they're trying to have their cake and eat it too. I get it. If anything, I, I kind of wish they would do that a little bit more throughout the course of the season. And I was talking to Anthony Slater about that a a little bit before the game in Sacramento tonight had tipped off early, early in the you know late afternoon. And I said, you know, they 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 could do pick their spots a little more, give a guy a night here, a night there, not have it necessarily be everybody gets one night. And and he, you know, said, Hey, they they I think they would like to do that, but they they get off to bad starts each of the last two years. They have injuries. They get themselves to a point where, you know, Draymond misses a ton of games, and then they come back in the second half and basically need to win every game. And so you can't you know, selectively try to give some teams, uh, you know, some players some nights off against some of these teams. The other part of it is it's easier to do, and I kind of made this point. It's easier to do in April. It's it's easier to do in April because. Portland is really trying to not win right now. And it's the same thing with Utah, who the Warriors saw last Sunday, going to see this Sunday. You've got some, te- like, if you play those teams in February or December and try to do that, you might get beat. And then you're in, you know, tr- even more trouble as far as the record goes. Could you imagine if this team had done that a couple of times earlier in the year and, and had two or three fewer wins? than they do right now. Then there'd have been nothing to play for basically uh, over the course of, of the night tonight. So uh, drew down, drew down in <laughs> Tracy asking, we shall receive tonight, Greg uh, drew down. Uh-huh. You're on the sports leader. Care. What's up, drew down. Hey, what's going on? Hey, I, I heard the, I uh, heard the bad signal go up. I was watching on YouTube. <laughs> I, all of a sudden I, you know, when your name's highlighted, started seeing orange, you know, fly. So I was like, what's going on here? So, um, yeah, I guess they asked me, shall I receive? So a lot of people complaining about the game, but like I said, the Blazers, boo-hoo, I don't care. They're missing everybody. We were missing two, three players. It's a late season game. Wasn't perfect, but guess what? Sometimes you got to, you know, you got to slay a few uh, dragons before you can get to the princess. So, um, you know, they, they, they got it done. Um, I feel like there's a lot of, this kid coming out, I know he's kind of polarizing. I just feel like he's, just feel kind of graded really harshly, and he gets a lot of feel like un, unnecessary hate. He didn't have his best game, you know. He didn't maybe wasn't great, but he still finished nineteen and six on seven from eleven from the floor. He had, you know, he had the turnovers. He had 
with four fouls, Kerr left him in after those fouls. And when, instead of taking him out, showed a little trust in him. And I think uh, Kaminga responded late. So he had on four free throws he knocked down on the floor. So it wasn't perfect, but I just feel like he's a polarizing player. But he's, you know, he's still, like, he just gets a lot of judge very harshly, in my opinion, anyways. But I, uh, I digress. I thought Loon and Pods were great, man. Loon was plus 19, Pods are plus 13. You know, Looney had four blocks. I saw him take, you know, he's been taking a little bit of that foul line area jumper lately. I feel like that's uh, a, a much needed aspect of his game just to give him a little something else when teams are sagging off him, allows him to, you know, be a little more dangerous out on the floor. So, but, you know, he gave us really big minutes tonight. And Pajemski just doing a little bit of everything with that late offensive board late to kick it back out. So I think it was Chris Paul to hit a three to kind of pretty much salt it away. So ugly win, but at the end of the day, they put themselves in a position to, to you know, possibly move up to the A seed. They might need a little help tomorrow, but if they can take care of business last two games, they might end up with an eight and possible seven seed. And at that point, you might have action. Thanks, man. That, yeah, thanks, Drew Down. Look, if, you, if the Warriors end up eight, it, it's going to be like a dream scenario. If, if if we're at Harmonic Brewing, Greg, at three o'clock on Sunday afternoon, and the Warriors are the eight seed, basically going on the road, knowing that they have a home game in their back pocket, but going on the road to play for the seven, and and potentially avoiding Denver, who now controls their own destiny for the the top spot in in the West, and I think they play what San Antonio and Memphis, I think, uh, in in the last in the last two games. Yeah, San Antonio and Memphis for for Denver. So Denver's probably going to be the one, which means you don't want to be the eight after the play-in tournament if you can possibly avoid it. If you're in the 9-10 game, you can't avoid it. The best you can move up to is eight. If you're in the in the 7-8 game, you have that chance, uh, and then you still have the second game in your back pocket, a home game, to try and get in. And at that point, you're forced to take your chances. You missed the first opportunity, but to have the two chances, I think is huge. And also to have the rest that you would get after that first game. If you win it, you're getting at least three days rest, maybe four, depending upon when you start. If you lose it, you're getting two days rest before you have to play your, your elimination game. And, you know, as far as Kaminga goes, yeah, I just, you know, it's funny because I, I do think he is kind of polarizing in the sense that, I mean, there are a lot of a lot of people out there that think he's just great already and he's a made dude and he's going to be a superstar and he's going to be all that. Like, but but the reality is, like, you know, like a game like tonight, like he's he's not going to be great every night. Like, but a game like tonight is the kind of game where I don't know. I, I to me tonight was not the night to be up in arms about the things that Kaminga didn't do because one, you're playing Portland and you're shorthanded. So it also becomes, well, what are you going to do? You're going to play Moses Moody over him, or you're going to play like like, you're going to play Sarich, which Steve Kerr did play Sarich a little bit tonight, a couple of minutes in the the first half. But you know, so are you, so it's, you're going to like tonight is the, these are the nights where you let him work through it where, where I disagree with people and and those of you that have followed me and listened to me for a while, where I disagree is that he gets that same leash automatically in a playoff series or in, or in an elimination game. Like if he played the way that he did tonight in an elimination game, he probably isn't going to wind up playing uh, 33 minutes. In fact, he might wind up playing about 15 in, in an elimination game. So, you know, to me, that's more where I'm at. Like, but as far as like the regular season and the ability to kind of let him work through different mistakes and and be able to grow and and be trusted and and make an impact on the game, even in a night where maybe he doesn't play his best floor game, like I'm all for that. Like to me, that's development. Uh, and and so you know, to me, again, tonight is not the night to be up in arms as much as there have been other nights. Uh, last year, more so than this year, where you know I, I think it makes sense to maybe go away with Kaminga or or start to maybe look at the things that he does or doesn't do well in the context of a team trying to win a playoff series or trying to win a, a championship. But um, but yeah, it it did seem like there was a lot of frustration, more frustration, Greg, tonight than I can ever remember from like Warrior fans on social media about Kaminga. Like, it seemed like people like I, I I was actually blown away because one of the things I've often said to you is 
nobody ever really even says he plays bad, I feel like, even on nights where he plays bad. But tonight it was like maybe because Draymond was – because here's the one thing that fans do. Here's the one thing that fans do that does kind of drive me nuts. It it does drive me nuts is like tonight because people are out and Kaminga stepping into a, a bigger role just by default. Tonight, it's like they expect him to have 30 and 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 14 and dominate just because you, it, tonight's your opportunity to and like it doesn't always work that way. It, 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 so like so I think in some ways he almost gets judged unfairly on a night like tonight because people are expecting him to have to look like a future all star against Portland. Draymond's out. Clay's shots are available. Uh, you know, all of those things. So I, I think tonight's tonight, Greg, where he gets he gets almost harsh, too harshly judged in that realm because everybody's thinking, oh, this is gonna be, you know, option one type or option two, you know, one A Kaminga. Uh, like he needs to go cook. And again, it doesn't work that way. You know what? And when I he also... doesn't do it, people are frustrated. When he doesn't do it, people are frustrated about it. It's like, come on, that's not what tonight is. You know what I also think fans do that can drive me a little crazy? And I think this is where Kaminga got on the wrong side of things with the social media discourse is when a player's out and then the Warriors go on a win streak, regardless of who it is or how many games it is, that player becomes significantly less important unless it's Steph and this team obviously is not going to go on a fat winning streak without Steph. I don't care who you're playing on the schedule because remember when Draymond was out with the suspension and they had the five game win streak in December against bad teams. And then there was the narrative of Draymond is a distraction and maybe they don't actually need him. And like, I'm not saying that Kaminga is getting that full treatment, but I think because they've done half of this nine out of 10 without him, then people are going to be quicker to criticize him on a night like tonight. And look, I'm, I'm even in the camp of, yeah, he's 21. It's, it's okay. Like he's going to have bad nights. You can't expect him to be perfect. But when your best players are in their mid to late thirties, then unfortunately you're going to need your 21 year olds to step up. And they, by the way, this team has had a bunch of children step in and perform the role player uh, role really well this year. So it's, I think in that regard, warrior fans are a little bit spoiled, but yeah, Kamingo was just on the wrong side of that tonight for me. I, I think that's where, when I do my grade a examination of social media as a Gen Zer, that's my take on it. That's a good one. That That's a good take. I, I think you're right. I think it is the, the recency of the warriors found something without him. And and now it's like, you know, maybe he feels a little less necessary to some than than he had been. I I think that's fair. Uh, But that that I I just don't like the whole like when somebody's out, the onus is on these guys to like tonight's the night you need to be an all star. Like, I, 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 I just think that's that's wholly unfair. Uh, to you know, Wiggins gets that one a lot. It's like, well, tonight's the night Wiggins has got to step up because somebody else. Well, it's like, yeah, yeah. I mean, yes, but again, that I think it's more fair to ask that of a veteran player also than a than a young player. All right, let's go ahead and take a little break here. Uh, eight hundred eight KMBR is the number. It's Dubs OT with JD. Man, we've been rolling here through this Thursday night. Uh, let's uh, get some sounds of silver. Coming back on the other side, we've got fun with numbers between now and 11 o'clock. YouTube chat is on fire. Appreciate everybody watching on YouTube, Twitch, and the Twitter stream uh, as well. Dubs get the win, 100 to 92. They get a little bit of help in Sacramento from the Pelicans who beat the Kings 135 to 123. And it all sets up a showdown Friday tomorrow in Northern California. Pelicans and Warriors from Chase, Suns and Kings at Golden One Center in Sacramento, and an opportunity for the Warriors still to move up into the 8-7 matchup uh, in the play-in tournament, which is going to be starting on Tuesday. Still time to sneak in some calls. 808 KNBR, the number. It is Dubs OT with JD, KNBR 104.5 and 680, the sports leader. Anybody who's saying rest is absolutely positively insane because
Did you hear something? Yeah, like a swoosh. Yeah. Dubs OT presents the sounds of silver. Streaming live on YouTube at KNBR 104.5. All right, Warriors win 100 to 92. Back here on Dubs OT with JD, John Dickinson, Greg Silver as well. Warriors are 45 and 35, currently ninth in the Western Conference playoff race. Sacramento is eighth, 45 and 35, and the Lakers are 10th, 45 and 35, with two games to go. And uh, yeah, now you know your three way. We, we laid out the three way tie scenario. If the uh, Kings, Warriors, and Lakers end up tied, we laid that out a couple of nights ago. And, and tonight we get to actually see it in the standings. So yeah, should the Kings, Warriors, and Lakers end up in a, in a three way tie for eight, uh, Sacramento would get the eight in that scenario. The Warriors would get the nine, and the Lakers would get the 10 uh, just by virtue of head-to-head play among the three. And I know I, I put out some tweets and, and some threads on, uh, it was really last night I kind of dug into all of the head-to-head numbers and, and you know, the, the three-way tie, like head-to-head ties are, you know, or two-way ties are the head-to-head and, and uh, you know, division record, conference record, those kinds of things, depending upon if, if teams are in the same division or not. Uh, and all of that, but once you get into the three and the four way ties, it it gets into head to head among the all of the teams that are that are tied, and so this thing has the potential to get uh, even crazier than it's already been uh, over the course of the last couple of days here, over the course of the next two days. And I'm sure the NBA is going to have all the scenarios out tomorrow. Uh, they usually wait until there's two games to go to go through every single. Uh, possible outcome and where it would leave everybody. Uh, so that's probably going to be out bright and early tomorrow. And uh, we'll make sure we get that out to, to everybody because I know a lot of people are thinking, uh, you know, what 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 happens if this team wins and that team? Uh, look, Warriors are still you know, with a shot uh, to be as high as seven, depending upon how things go, and and still could be 10, depending upon uh, how things go or anywhere in between. Uh, but all of that will, will shake out uh, over the course of the next couple of days. And tomorrow's the big one. Tomorrow's the big one with the Warriors and Pelicans and the Kings and Suns going up against each other. We'll know a lot about the Warriors' fate this time tomorrow when we're out at uh, Harmonic Brewing. So we bring Greg Silver back in. A lot of good sounds I, I've heard. So uh, let's let's get off and rolling here. Uh, what do we got from, from Portland tonight? Well, we're actually going to go to the phones real quick because we just got okay. Shardall oh, calling can, oh. in from Fremont, okay. and I don't want to leave our lovely guest well, waiting on the line. So we'll get no, to that Shardall, first. Shardall and Fremont is next here on Dubs OT. What's going on tonight? Hey, J.D., it's uh, great, great being on the show. I love all your content. Um, I love every, all your videos, man. You do a great, you do a phenomenal job covering the Warriors. Um, Thank you. So as a Warriors fan, I don't want us to face the Nuggets in the first round because they're a really intimidating team, man. They have, like, stars. They have, like, stars such as Reggie Jackson, Nikola Jokic, Jamal Murray, Aaron Gordon, and Michael Porter Jr. And um, I don't want us to face them because, you know, we, I know that when we face this team, you know, how, you know, we're sometimes we're successful against them and sometimes we aren't. So that isn't, that was not a team. That is not a team that I would like to see. Like, I don't want to face them. Like we're probably going to lose in the first round if we face Denver. I would agree with that. Uh, Shardall, uh, but the only way you can avoid it is to get to eight and then win that play in game. Cause then you move to seven. And and likely that would mean you'd play Minnesota or or Oklahoma City if everything kind of shakes out the way that it it looks like it's going to with Denver now controlling their own destiny as far as the the one goes. So to me that all leads down the path toward still something to play for tomorrow. You still need a little bit of help if you're going to move up, but go all in and try to get it. And if you can't tomorrow by the end of the night, if Sacramento wins and and those options are. are gone, then maybe you think about resting up for, for Sunday and resting up for the pathway ahead. But uh, I, I wouldn't even be considering it as far as tomorrow goes. 
Uh, so what are your tips if the Warriors want to beat the, the Pelicans? Because that, that, these two games are crucial for, for the Warriors because they have to win both of these games if they want to decide where they're going to uh, – where they're standing yeah, in the playoffs coming well, – coming yeah. Yeah, look, the size is important tomorrow. I mean, Valanchunas and Zion Williamson on, on the interior are are a terror. <laughs> and so you're going to have to be able to to combat that. I think you want to try to you know, get out in transition as much as you can. I think you want to make CJ McCollum defend. Uh I you know, and and you got to guard the 3. They they get a lot of really good open three looks they move the ball they they get a lot of paint touches and they spray it out for threes they throw it down in the paint paint touches kickouts ball movement trey murphy is outstanding as a three-point shooter mccollum it can can hit you with the three ball alvarado can be a pest and hit the three ball uh the backup guard there uh, dyson daniels hit a couple threes tonight you know looking at them so they they've got They've got some guards that can pressure the ball. They've got some bigs who can, can dominate the paint. They've got, they've got shooters. Like they are a pretty balanced team. They're not going to have Brandon Ingram tomorrow, but I, I think you got to really, really try to not let CJ McCollum do his thing. He's the one guy, veteran guy, a little more up and down at this point. I, I think, you know, I, I don't want to say let Zion have his, but Zion's going to be the most difficult of everybody to, to contain. I think they've got to try to take CJ McCollum away. So the Warriors have to come up with that eye of the tiger mentality tomorrow against the Falcons, and they got to play their best game, play play their best game of basketball. Um, and they can't be scared of the Pelicans because they can't be scared of their uh, their size. They, they just got to come out and play, and like they just got to like they just got to play a a good game of basketball, and and just whatever result shows is, is the results that's going to show it. Um, you know, if they lose, they lose. And, um, you know, you can't really do anything about that because if you play your hardest out there, that's all that matters. And then what the results that show after, you know, that, that's, that comes secondary. No, absolutely. Shardall. Thank you so much for the call. Uh, great phone call tonight. Don't make it your last Shardall. Appreciate that. Uh, yeah, I mean, leave it all out there. Uh, th- that's all you can do. And, and I think that's what the Warriors are going to do tomorrow. People in the, in the chat, uh, you know, J.K. and Wiggins attacking the paint says Irwin Kwong. Uh, I, I think that's that's real good. Uh, you know, Draymond and Clay coming back gives you a little bit of in, in energy. Uh, I think. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's it's going to be interesting. Yeah, Andis Brown, uh, Ingram playing against the Lakers Sunday. That was a, yeah, Chris Haynes report from earlier that he was going to come back and, and play Sunday. Uh, and so not tomorrow. We'll find out officially that he's ruled out for tomorrow uh, at around one o'clock tomorrow when the when the formal injury report uh, comes up. Yeah, it's, it, it, this team still got a chance. Uh, JD needs to be wearing orange to match that back. Yeah, it does look like I'm in the cell. It does look like I'm in a in a in a cell in a, in a jail cell. It does it does look that way. Uh, and the, uh, yeah, well, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna, we'll just leave it at that. I've, d- I've done this. Sh- I'm in a dungeon. Uh, people have said, uh, I've done a show. I've done shows from this room before. Uh, JD looks like he's in the dungeon. Um, Greg, let's get to, to sounds of silver, uh, here, uh, on dubs OT tonight. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, and appreciate the call from Shardall. Always happy to push off some sound. If it means people want to chime in. Chat tonight is going off. This is April, baby. This is where it's heating up. I love it. Let's get to our oh, first one, cut of sound. One I wanted to get to, Fozzie, real quick. Fozzie, if we're the eighth seed on Sunday, drinks on at Harmonic JD. Does it? it well, it says drink. I, I thought it said drinks on JD, but we we can make it drinks on JD. If if the Warriors get the eighth seed, drinks are on JD. Stop by, say hi at Harmonic. Oh yeah, Thrive eight seed. seed. Woo. Three, and Greg, by the way, Greg's going to be out there as well. Uh, and we're going at least till five o'clock, I'm told, on, on Friday. So we're going to be on about three. I think we are going to wind up with the duel. Like we're going to start on YouTube, Twitch and the Twitter stream. And then we're going to join on the radio after 
uh, the weekend Giants postgame extra innings with Bill Lasky, whenever that wraps up, uh, the Giants are playing in, in St. Petersburg against the, the Rays. And so, yeah, we're going at least until five with our full season recap and play in preview. Uh, with Dubs OT. So looking forward to that from, from Harmonic. And it's it's Greg's birthday. It's Greg's birthday on Sunday. And he's going to be out there doing the show with me in person. So stop by, say hi. We appreciate everybody who's been listening and watching all, all year long. Uh, all right, Greg, I've cut you off enough. I've, I've, I've overran my cutoffs of Greg tonight. Uh, the floor is yours, my friend. Take it away for Sounds of Silver. No, no, it's all good. You just got me all shy and blushing now over here, so I will get the sounds to deflect attention away from me. First up, uh, we got a lot of good sound, but we're going to start with Steve Kerr being kind of honest about the team. He said after the Lakers game, he didn't think they played very well, and we didn't have that sound because it was a YouTube-only show. Kind of was brutally honest uh, about the struggle to execute tonight. This is 25 seconds of Kerr's assessment on the offense. Yeah, it was a tough uh, night for us. We, we did not uh, execute very well, but, um, you know, these are tricky games. We were obviously uh, resting, you know, Clay and, and uh, Draymond, who, who were, you know, banged up. And with the back-to-back, we're, you know, we're just hoping to take care of business tonight and Portland I give them a lot of credit they played really hard and they made things uh, much more difficult on us but we uh we pulled through in the end yeah I think the key there and I was he said rest as as Greg had, had, yeah they it, and I just want to make sure we're making the same point rest as opposed to legitimate injury is is was the point yeah yeah, they rested them. Look, and, and and they protect themselves by putting you know injuries that players are dealing with. I mean, all players are dealing with injuries at this point of the year. You could you could probably go through every player on the Warriors roster and come up with a legitimate injury to put on the injury report. The Lakers do it with Davis and LeBron like the whole season. <laughs> Those guys are on the injury report, questionable for every single game. Uh, but yeah, they look. The Warriors are are living well this week with the way that they've decided to play this thing. They went for Dallas uh, as much as they could with, with Wiggins and Kaminga legitimately injured. They didn't get it. They gave Steph a night off against Utah. They got it. They gave Draymond and Clay a night off tonight against the two weakest opponents that they have remaining on the schedule, and they got it. They went all in on the Lakers and got that. And now tomorrow they're looking for another go all in against a really good Pelicans team that's trying to stay in the six uh, with a win. Uh, And so, you know, we'll see what what happens and if they can get that one tomorrow. And if they can get that one, we've seen where Utah is. We just saw where Utah is right now, Greg. Uh, They don't want to win. So, you know, if it got to a point where all the Warriors had to do was win Sunday, Look out. I think the Warriors would win Sunday. A few people in the chat have been saying, well, J.D., who are the Warriors going to play if they get to eight in the in the play in? Most likely it would be Phoenix or or New Orleans at, at that point. Now, the interesting thing is. In the scenario now that the Warriors need, which is another King's loss. In that scenario, let's just say the Warriors went out because the Warriors have to win out. Uh, in the scenario the Warriors need, that would mean that that Phoenix would get a win while the Pelicans are losing. So, so tomorrow Phoenix would gain in that scenario if we play it out a game on the Pelicans. That would flip the Pelicans to seventh if if that all played out. They would have the same record with one game to go. And so at that point in time, it would be the Pelicans that the Warriors would be playing uh, at New Orleans, eight at seven on Tuesday. (laughs) So, uh, but again, then you get, and look, I, I like that opportunity for the Warriors. I really do. Um, You know, the, the, I, I just like, now if the Suns end up, the Suns would then have to win against Minnesota on Sunday to keep the six seed. If they lose to Minnesota Sunday, and Minnesota could be playing for the one, at least a chance at the one, then it could flip and the Pelicans could go back to six and the Suns could go to seven. So I, I like the potential for, in that scenario, the Warriors playing the 
playing the Pelicans, even though they may uh, may not like the travel part of it, you do get an extra day coming back if you have to play that other game. But if you win it, you get a full three days off at least before you have to play a series. Yeah, and I mean, New Orleans would be by far the longest flight to possibly take in the play-in scenario for the Warriors, but it's an entirely different deal if you're talking about a 7-8 game than a 9-10 game or an 8-9 elimination game kind of thing. So I really, really like and, that opportunity if that's what they can well, get. And and here's the other thing, and I know this was a long time ago, but the Warriors played one game in New Orleans this season, and they won by 30. Now, it was like game four, I think, of the whole season, but they won by 30. Yeah, we will talk about when they played a chase because that might as well have been equivalent to like three losses of how bad that was. Uh, Greg, what what else do we got coming up here on on Sounds of Silver? Another Steve Kerr cut. He gives his props to both Pajemski and Looney for what they did tonight. Yeah, I thought the two key guys were Loon and and, uh, Brandon. Um, You know, Loon just saved us. he, like he has done dozens of times in his career here. Um, you know, he's kind of been on the outside of the rotation now um, for the last six weeks or so, and he always stays ready. And, you know, he just he came in, changed the game. We were, we were really getting bullied on the glass uh, early in the game, and, and I thought he came in and um, established a tone inside. And then I thought uh, Brandon's defense uh, on – Scoot and Henderson, um, the last five, six minutes of the game was was massive and uh, helped us get that separation. Yeah, two big nods there to Pajemski and, and Kevon Looney. And, and that was something that I had put in my notes and, and we hadn't quite gotten to was the boards. Yeah, the boards were were really problematic uh, for, for the Warriors. It was, uh, I think at one point early in the third quarter, it was 12 offensive rebounds for the Blazers. And the Warriors at that point had, you know, 12 turnovers, basically looking like they were on their way to to 20 and they ended up at, at 16. So the Warriors did not turn it over as much in, in the second half as they did uh, in the first half. And at that point, I mean, the Blazers still ended up with 20 offensive rebounds uh, and, and hit the Warriors on the glass. But the Warriors were able to close the gap and get a couple of their own tonight. Thanks to thanks to Looney. And there's just a steadying, calming influence that Looney brings that, that we've you know talked about a lot. But uh, yeah, it, it, the heroes tonight. Absolutely. Looney and Pajemski make no mistake about it. Yeah, and even the points off of turnovers, I kept writing it in my notes throughout the game and documenting it. It was like 15 to 3. It's really, really bad. Ended up just being 19 to 14 advantage for Portland. Uh, in the end, the Warriors only had three more turnovers than they did. So, yeah, you know, it's uh, it could have been a lot worse. Let's hear from the guy himself, Kevon Looney. This was from NBC Sports Bay Area. From the court post game right afterwards, He's speaking confidently about this team and in true Kevon Looney fashion, like a team player. You know, the second part of the year, we've been one of the best teams in the league. Uh, we know our defense has been great. Offensively, we know what, uh, what we're capable of. Uh, we've got a really deep team. And we got Steph, CP, Draymond, Clay, guys that know how to win, uh, make playoff runs. Uh, we know we can beat anybody. Uh, we got to get there. You know, it ain't going to be easy. Uh, it's going to be tough. But uh, we feel like once we get there, we can make, uh, make a lot of noise. It's all you can ask for is a shot. And, and the Warriors have a shot and it may be a better shot than even the current shot that they have uh, right now, but it's going to take, it's going to take a, a couple of more huge, huge wins. But yeah, I, I think the belief and the vibes and everything, you know, again, three, four weeks ago, you wouldn't have imagined that the Warriors would have been able to get to this point. Uh, but, but here they are. I mean, and, and, and let's be honest, Steve Kirk called it right. I mean, this is what, nine of 10. Now it's not a 10 game streak, but it's nine of 10 and it may very well get to 10 of 11 and 11 of 12 here between now and, and, and Sunday, you know, he said it and I'll admit, I kind of laughed, you know, he said any team can get on a 10 game winning streak at any point, including this one. And, and the Warriors have not quite done it. And maybe the one that they don't get proves to be the difference. But as rock and new era, 84 points out, this team is a complete 180 from one month ago. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I don't think there's any doubt. I mean, a month ago it was basically, you know, they're fighting for 
their life in San Antonio to get a win, any kind of a win without Steph Curry. I mean, that was literally a month ago uh, tonight uh, on, on, on March the 11th. And, and look, that team up until that point had looked like they were coming around, but then Steph goes down and it all kind of fell apart for like two weeks. And now they're, they've put it back together with the, the, the nine out of nine out of 10. Uh, let's keep it going, Greg. What else, uh, what else do we have? Got three more. This will be the last Looney themed cut, but I did want to get Pajemski's perspective on Looney and what he's been like for the team and someone he really looks up to in his first year as an NBA player. He's a pro's pro. Obviously he hasn't been in the rotation uh, because of trace, but he does what he's supposed to do. He's been in the league for a while now. Speaking of being a pro, he, you know, he's playing the, the low minute games with, you know, Pat Gee, Jerome, Lester, Usman, all those guys. He doesn't complain. He just goes about his day. And the thing I, I love about most about Loon is, you know, what you're going to get from him every time he's out there. Um, he doesn't need to take a shot to impact the game. You know, he's going to get his how many ever rebounds. He's going to play the right way. He's going to set solid screens. You know what you're going to get from him. And I think that's what I see as a rookie. And that's what I want to become. And Steve knows that as well. It's a good guy to model yourself after just as a professional. I'll, I'll say that really, no matter what you do, try to, everybody could, could use a little more Kevon Looney temperament and, and, and work ethic in their and demeanor in, the, in their life. Oh yeah. I mean, even at the station here, like we had a lot of changes as you're well aware, getting brought into a new environment here in November, JD. And uh, I think, the best way we've all gotten through some of that is to just be team players and pick up the slack and support one another and you know, having the best attitude possible at all times. So I can't resonate what it's with what it's like to be an NBA player and be a Kavon Looney shoes, but attitude and effort, two things you can always control in life and a good reminder of just that a couple more. And this one's okay. short, but I think it was my favorite cut of the entire night. It's about Brandon Pajemski from the podium. And he talks about a certain somebody really lighting a fuse in the fourth quarter. I'll just leave it at that. I think we called the timeout with well, six, seven minutes to go. And Draymond kind of just got after me and told me we need the BP that's, that got you here early in the season, how I was playing. And uh, he was just like, get every loose ball, play, play the best defense on Scoot. And I kind of took that challenge head on and did good for the most part. And I think that was a part, part of the reason why we were able to make a run there late. Wow. How about that? So that's... <laughs> So are are we do we need to give a do we need to give Draymond a game ball? What do we what, what I think I think we need to just hammer in that Pajemski's a mini Draymond again. <laughs> yeah, that's not yeah, we're not gonna go there. We're not gonna go there again tonight. We're not gonna go there again tonight. Uh, a couple of more here in the in the chat before we, we finish up with our final cut here. Uh Milton. Uh great radio. Y'all two need a show. Well, we have a show. We we have a couple of them actually. We we got this show. We got the the Just Dub show on on Saturday, uh, which really going to be a great show Saturday uh, with with everything going on. Obviously tomorrow. So join us from ten a.m. until noon, and then we're going to be back at Harmonic on Sunday at least three to five. At least three to five. Stop by, say hi, have a brew. It's on yours truly. I was talking to Jimmy out there uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna have a good time on on Sunday afternoon, and who knows, we might be uh, allowing Warrior fans to celebrate being the eight seed, depending upon what happens here over uh, the next High five. Uh, couple couple of days. A uh, couple of days. San Jose Jazz fan the third JD having a cinder block party tonight. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Rebel to sound. Steph was clutch in the fourth. Yes, he was. And and there have been a few of, of those games where Steph has just not had it shooting wise, but he's hit a couple of big ones down the stretch. And Steph was able to hit a couple of big ones down the stretch tonight. Always a threat. Uh, always a uh, you know somebody that that you need. Uh, but yeah, so. It, Again, uh, they did enough, just barely enough to avoid what would have been, I, I think would have been one of the biggest bummers of the whole season to not even see this thing get to tomorrow. And and you talk about the challenge ahead. Uh, the Pelicans 
are going to be playing their 42nd road game tomorrow. Why are the Pelicans playing a 42nd road game? Well, the playing tournament led to them losing a home game and because they advanced in the play-in tournament. The in-season tournament. I'm sorry, the in-season tournament. Yeah, know, know, your, know your goofy NBA tournaments. But yeah, they advanced to... They advanced to the final four, right? Like they they were in the final four, I believe. They went to Vegas. Yeah, they beat the Kings, so, right? Yeah, they beat the one of the five times they beat the Kings this year. So they ended up with a they ended up losing a home game and and gained a road game because they played in their extra game. Uh, their extra road game was in Sacramento earlier in the year, and they won that game to go to Vegas. And so they play an extra road game. And they are tw- they they have the best road record in the NBA. They are tied with the Celtics at twenty seven and fourteen, and will have an opportunity if they can win tomorrow to get the best road record in the NBA for the entire season. Now you look at the Warriors and Marcus Thompson crunched all these, so I want to give him credit. And and I just saw him tweet it out as we were doing the show here. Uh, T Wolves twenty six and fifteen, Clippers twenty six and fifteen. The Mavs are 25 and 50. The Warriors are 25 and 16. The Warriors ended up with the sixth best road record in the NBA this year, 25 and 16. And they even let a couple get away. So that that's something that is super, super, super uh, impressive uh, from, from the Warriors this season. But yeah, uh, who's coming to chase tomorrow? It's the Pelicans and their potentially number one road record in the NBA. And yeah, they won three games in Sacramento this year. Think about that. They won three games like that, you know, tough place to play. Obviously they dominated the Kings and they're trying to complete what would be what five games uh, in, in Northern California, a five and O Northern California sweep. Uh, tomorrow night uh, at Chase Center, and they need it. If if they're going to be the the six and get that last spot that avoids the playing tournament, they they have to keep winning. Uh, and again, they can wrap up the six tomorrow if they win and Sacramento beats Phoenix, which obviously uh, would would drop the Warriors back down into a spot where they probably are going to be tenth <laughs> and then going to LA uh, in 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 the nine ten game because the Warriors need at worst, to win these last two to stay ninth and host the Lakers on Wednesday in in the play-in, uh, play-in tournament f- first elimination game. All right, one more cut, Greg, and then w- we got to take a break and come back. Yeah, but it could be just be a short break, like 2.15 okay. or so. So all of you okay, in the chat, one more, don't go anywhere. One more cut. Don't go anywhere. We'll come back with fun with numbers and yeah, some final thoughts from the two of us and in the YouTube chat as uh, Dubs OT will will continue. We're pushing that two hour mark, which I absolutely love on a Dubs OT show. Yeah, and before I get to the last cut, I know I like to throw some quotes in sometimes. Had there not been so much good sound tonight, I might have actually thrown this in Sounds of Silver. Steve Kerr was on earlier today with Tolbert and Cope says we'll get JD's camera back in just a bit. Oh, bumped there he is. I bumped something. That's me. <laughs> I bumped it. I bumped a key. And we may play this cut tomorrow uh, if it applies to the game, but he talked about Trace Jackson Davis being in the lineup and he said it makes their defense seem a lot more real. Uh, he, he said as well as Draymond was playing at the five, there were definitely a, a certain amount of vulnerabilities there. And I thought that was a really an interesting quote given how much they were committed to Draymond at the five for so long with Kamingo and Wiggins being able to coexist. But this last cut is from none other than Steph Curry. It's just under a minute long and it's his breakdown about what was a rough and choppy game, but getting disciplined at the right time when it counted. Kind of rough choppy game. Uh, Obviously I was missing shots all over the place. You know, they have a lineup that we understand their situation. So they're, you know, they're going to play hard, um, you know, play with energy, try to disrupt everything we're doing. And for the most part, it worked for 42 minutes. And then we just got really disciplined down the stretch. <clears throat> uh, great point of attack defense. Uh, got a couple turnovers that led to 
momentum uh, and transition on our on the other end. L you know, Looney was unbelievable. Uh, you know, securing the paint on defense, finishing at the rim, giving Aiton a little bit of problems down the stretch. You know, he, he's gonna get his shots up, but we just we just competed, and that last six minutes was hard nosed basketball, and it was what it took to win. And sometimes games play out that way. I was watching, you know, Phoenix last night was playing the Clippers who rested everybody. It was basically Bones Highland and and Boston and, and you know, everybody that was like 7 to 15 on the Clippers roster, 8 to 15 on the Clippers roster was playing. And the Suns were having a hell of a time. They were down a good chunk of the game. And then in the last six, eight minutes, they just go on a run and they and they put the game away. Sometimes it just plays out that way. And, you know, you got to stick with it. This game, that game was a lot more defense optional. People scoring at will on each other. Uh, tonight was more of a of a grind. Uh, and, you know, the Warriors didn't lose touch, which I think was was really important that, you know, they were down uh, seven was was the most that they got down but I'm trying to think what was the most they were down in the second half I want to say it was 5 or 6 it might have been 6 the most they were down in the in the second half and you know to to be in that spot like you're always if you're down 6 you're in a little bit of trouble but you're you, you know you're you're not feeling it well yeah it was 6 and it was 6 with 909 to go so uh, you know it, it was 6 with about 830 to go so that's but if it's six, you still feel like knowing Steph was coming back, that, that this team was still going to have a chance. You know, that's that's a quick Steph Curry heater and you're in good shape again. Yeah, and that's kind of what happened, right? He took a, actually a little bit of a rest when Kaminga was at the free throw line with about five minutes to go. And then and then there was a timeout. Yes. Yeah. And he came right and back he got in. Him right back in. Yeah. So it, I think it ended up being a four second rest on the clock. Well it, played. What, what what it amounted to yeah a four second rest uh and and so yeah i mean we'll see uh yeah fozzy making reference earlier to the cut the looney cut that we played uh telling the guys there in nbc sports bay area that that he thinks they can make a deep playoff run look steve kerr agrees steve kerr agrees uh so we'll we'll have to see how all of this shakes out let's go ahead and take a quick break quick break We'll come back, we'll do fun with numbers, and we'll look ahead to tomorrow as the Warriors are going to take on the Pelicans at Chase Center. We'll be live at Harmonic Brewing after that one for Dubs OT. Final thoughts from Greg Silver and myself, and in the YouTube chat as well as the Warriors went at 100 to 92. It's KMBR 1045 and 680, the sports leader. Can you just email me the rest of this story?
This is Dubs OT with JD. Time now for fun. I'm a fun guy. <laughs> with numbers. No, I'm just having fun. On KNBR 1045 and 680. Streaming live on KNBR.com and the KNBR app. All right, final segment. John Dickinson and Greg Silver. Dubs OT with JD here on the Sports Leader as uh, we'll be back tomorrow following the Warriors and the New Orleans Pelicans from Chase Center. Look for us right around 9.15, 9.30 from Harmonic Brewing in Thrive City. And then the big season-ending show, regular season-ending show, uh, Sunday, 3 o'clock, right at the final horn. And uh, we're going at least until 5. We may even go till 6 on Sunday, depending upon how things shake out. Uh, and what lies ahead for the Warriors. And uh, we'll have a, a clearer picture of everything tomorrow uh, after the Warriors take on the Pelicans and the Suns and Kings battle uh, in Sacramento. Final uh, couple of minutes here. Let's get to fun with numbers, and, and we'll run through some things. Greg providing some some real good ones that we'll get to as well. 25th road win of the year. We talked about that. That is the sixth most road wins in a single season in franchise history for the Warriors. They won 17 of their last 21 on the road to do the trick. And after winning just 11 away from Chase Center, the Warriors doubled it and then some from last year to this year. Home games have been a disappointment, but this team has made major hay on the road this year. And uh, the last time the Warriors uh, 117 to 21 on the road was the 2018-2019 the season. And that was a Steph Clay, Kevin Durant, Draymond Green, uh, even DeMarcus Cousins as uh, the five uh, on that team for a good part of that stretch when the Warriors were last this dominant uh, away from away from home. So impressive, impressive stuff. Warriors have been blocking a lot of shots lately. Uh, 13 more blocks tonight, which tied a season high. Uh, against the Bucks uh, back about a month or so ago, that game where the Warriors blew out the Bucks, and uh, you know that's that's TJD being around uh, and and playing uh, a, a little bit more and making an impact, and so yeah, the Warriors with 13 blocks tonight. Uh, the Blazers just had an awful time shooting. Warriors did play some pretty good defense. They've also continued to take advantage of teams that can't shoot. They've done it, Miami and. Charlotte and Orlando, a lot of opportunities for wins. Did I miss somebody, Greg? Did I miss somebody recently that can't shoot? I guess you, uh, Utah Johnny Juzang. I'm not going to say they can't shoot. He was killing people. Uh, six and one, though, this year, the Warriors are when they hold opponents under 40% from the field. This was the seventh time they did that. Uh, and uh, the Warriors are also 9-0 and oh when they hold their opponent under 100 They've done it seven of the nine times on the road. If that's not telling, I don't know what is as far as being more locked in. The Warriors have just played better defense away from Chase Center. They've played a lot more loosely at home and a lot more, you know, I I think lackadaisical, but also, hey, we're going to win with our offense as opposed to getting out and grinding. They're going to need some grind tomorrow. Uh, Erwin Kwong chiming in on the chat. Rebounding in our rim protection? What's next? Perimeter defense? Well, that would be the final spot in the in the trifecta and that uh, still has not been there, but uh, fortunately for the Warriors tonight, it didn't burn them because Portland in fact cannot shoot. Uh, another clutch game. This qualified as another clutch game And the Warriors now have played 46 clutch games. They have tied Atlanta, Greg, for the most in the league. So the Warriors can still take home that crown if they can play. Well, I don't think anybody's hoping Sunday's a clutch game. I can't believe believe another team's close. There was a point where it felt like every game was. Well, and they've been trailing Atlanta most of the year in, in that category, which I think has been stunning. Uh, I, I've kept a little bit of tabs on it. Yeah, and, and Atlanta's been the one team ahead of them for a good chunk of the year. The Warriors got to 500 in clutch games at, at 23 and 23 uh, in the 46. So we'll see. I think tomorrow's probably going to have to be a clutch game. And you know, we'll see. I mean, the, the Pelicans have size. They have length. They have shooting. Uh, they play good defense. They have some pesty guys on the wing and in the and you know on the guard. You know, Herb Jones and 
Alvarado and Daniels, like all those guys can, can really defend. So they've got some bodies that they can throw at Steph and at clay. The Warriors are going to have to be buttoned up and fired up. I think having an energetic Draymond green tomorrow will go a, a long way toward the Warriors having their best opportunity to potentially win that game. Uh, the Warriors did start. There was some confusion as to what the starting lineup would be, which was kind of funny in the pregame. Steve Kerr telegraphed it in the pregame press conference. He said it's going to be CP, uh, meaning Chris Paul, for, for Clay Thompson. And then it went out. There's a there's a, a league-wide lineup like inputting thing that teams like put their lineup in 30 minutes before. There, there's a time 30 minutes before tip that all the lineups have to basically be into this computer. And uh, somewhere lost in translation, uh, they put Pajemski as the starter. So it showed up as Pajemski. Uh, but it, but uh, it, it was Chris Paul, and regardless, it was the 27th different uh, starting lineup for the Warriors. Kaminga and TJD getting the start in, in the front court. Uh, Chris Paul and Steph Curry in the back court with Pajemski uh, coming off the bench tonight. 27. That's a third of the season. The Warriors have had a different starting lineup uh, in in different games. We talked about Trace Jackson Davis. 10 points, eight boards, four assists, career high tying four blocks, fourth time he's had four blocks, and he scored double figures 26 times uh, on the season. Stephen Curry ended up rallying for 22, which uh, led the Warriors, and we've talked about Kevon Looney, uh, 11 boards and 21 minutes off the bench, the 11th time this season and the fourth time off the bench that he's recorded that many boards. Uh, yeah, uh, Kevon Looney, a team high plus 19 tonight, uh, in, in 20 minutes and he played 20 minutes for the first time since January 12th. Wow. So yeah, Kevon Looney back in the rotation, Greg. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Hey, no, he's not. He's ready. He's ready when he's called upon. He's never that far away. Stephen Curry, 350 or more made threes in three different seasons. The only player to do it once is James Harden, who did it in the 2018-2019 season. Steph now three different times has hit 350 or more. Of course, he had the 400 plus going back to uh, the unanimous MVP season. And Brandon Pajemski via Stat Mamba, Brandon Pajemski, I like this one, has the fifth highest plus minus by a rookie guard in NBA history. That's incredible. That is incredible. Uh, Yeah. Wow. Plus 277. So when people, you know, try to act like, oh, Pajemski, like what is he important? Is he impactful? Is he like he has been a part of nearly every good Warriors lineup? This season, and who says rookies can't come in and contribute and be glue guys and and help uh, to you know provide winning uh, in you know a Steve Kerr coach team? That's they, the Warriors are basically have two, and Pajemski started a good chunk of the year, and TJD is starting at the end of the year, so uh, it can be done, and players can be. Uh, developed uh, along those lines. All I right. mean, there was a Final. time, JD, when the season wasn't looking so hot and Pajemski was like their saving grace, keeping them afloat for a lot of games. No question. No question. Uh, a couple of comments here. Wasn't sure. This is OPG. I wasn't sure about the rest gamble, but it, it paid off uh, or it might pay off and is needed because playing rolls right to the right to the playoffs. No, no question about that. Izzy's cheesesteaks chiming in. What up, JD? Big win. Steph was big when it was clutch time. He was clutch. And that gets to the, the final number, which you had a Marcus Thompson note that uh, I. Yeah, Stephen Curry looked cooked. I'll read this verbatim as Marcus uh, tweeted it uh, at Thompson Scribe on Twitter. Curry looked cooked. Then he scored or assisted on 15 straight points. So yeah, he he helped bring the Warriors home uh, a winner uh, in this one tonight in a in a big time way. And he came up clutch in in every way possible to help put that game away. Uh, and so yeah, we'll uh, we'll see now if the Warriors can make it stand up, and we'll see if the Warriors can get uh, a, a little bit of help. So for all of the positivity. 
And, you know, the optimism, and there should be optimism uh, based on the way things played out as a whole, despite an, an ugly game, uh, that if the Warriors can get tomorrow and get a little bit of help from the Suns, they would they would control their own destiny for the eight seed and play either the Pelicans or the Suns uh, in all likelihood in the play-in tournament coming up on that would be Tuesday, but to get to eight with a chance to then beat the Pelicans again on the road, I think would be incredible. Uh, if not, uh, then it becomes maybe you're the 10 and you got to go down to LA and win for the third time. in in what would be a month on the calendar, uh, a month and a day, which would be no picnic, but uh, alas, the Warriors are giving themselves I think the best opportunity that they've had. Greg, great stuff tonight. Final thoughts to you, and then we will reconvene tomorrow uh, here on KMBR. Yeah, no profound realizations on the final thoughts, uh, just that the Warriors are gaining some momentum, and I feel like we're gaining momentum right with them. I will see you in less than 24 hours, and we're going to do this all over again. So uh, it's beautiful. Appreciate all the regulars from Douglas Mikes to Drew Down to Enrique Rivera to San Jose Jazz fan the third and Judith Pierre and Puko Sports and Fozzie and Regulator Joe H. Everybody, OPG, a newbie uh, in the chat tonight. Appreciate OPG uh, for chiming in. Rock and New Era 84, as always. CA, Andis Brown. Uh, all of our famed regulars, Erwin Kwong, it would not be a Dubs OT show without you. Uh, appreciate everybody. We will talk to you tomorrow night. Warriors win at 100 to 92. From Harmonic tomorrow, Dubs OT, KMBR, the sports leader. We know we can be anybody. That's just like making a game winner. Crack it three. Curry three. Absolutely lit. Trace Jackson Davis. Oh! He put the entire country in France in the basket. Take that eight foot wings, man. Lift you. Some days I think about like homework in school, but then, you know, I got to look and then I don't have it. I love it. I love it. I love that guy so much. But Grant Williams got to stop it. Draymond is like fish sauce. Big, fat, duh.